with OnePlus's announcement that they will be using Color OS, OnePlus goes further away from what they had originally started as, as the brainchild of Carl Pei and Pete Lau. But on closer examination, was OnePlus and Carl Pei ever an enthusiast brand? What is Carl Pei's motivation and inspiration behind his smartphone ventures? Is he the next Steve Jobs? Or is he just a marketing gimmick mastermind? I understand that a lot of people are really unhappy with the move away from Oxygen OS towards Color OS. But when looking further into the history of OnePlus, it seemed like it was a move that was almost inevitable. Like from the day that Carl Pei decided to start the OnePlus brand, it was eventually going to lead to become Oppo or OnePlus One is Oppo Plus one. To get a better understanding about Carl Pei's philosophy and the direction of OnePlus, along with the future of Carl Pei's smartphone endeavors, I decided to do a deep dive into the history of Carl Pei. Carl Pei was born in 1989 to wealthy Chinese parents. He then later moved to America for a short period of time and then later moved to Sweden where he attended college. This gave Carl Pei a unique advantage in that he was, in many ways, trilingual, being born to Chinese parents in a Chinese-speaking household, living in America, and then attending college in Sweden. He was able to see not only culture in Asia, culture in Europe, but culture in Western markets like America. And in that matter, Carl Pei had the precise perspective needed to penetrate the Western market from a Chinese speaker. 2011 was a big year for Pete Lau. At the age of only 22, Pete Lau dropped out of college, began working for Nokia, left Nokia to then go work at Meizu, all in one year. In November of that very year, Carl Pei then left Meizu to go work under Carl Pei at Oppo. Only two years after Carl Pei began working at Oppo under Pete Lau, Carl Pei launched the OnePlus brand in 2013. Their initial device, the OnePlus One, was expected to sell only 50,000 units and it ended up selling over 1 million. Much of this had to do with the marketing and the hype that Pete Lau was able to drum up for this new brand. In markets like India, they went as so far as to delivering some of the first orders via tuk-tuks. In America, they had you smashing your old devices to get a new one, had you wearing OnePlus clothing, and Carl Pei was the mastermind behind spreading the OnePlus hype and building up this idea of an enthusiast brand. Even though the entire time, he was being backed by Pete Lau and Oppo. It's also important to remember that during this period of time, the Nexus series of devices were really big and popular, and this idea of stock Android became more and more feasible. Really, this was because of the specs that we had available and the thick Android skins that a lot of OEMs were putting on their devices. This idea that a company was willing outside of Google to make a paired back stock Android enthusiast device took the Western market and tech enthusiasts by storm. Because back in 2013, 2014, it was really clear that OEM skins on top of Android were just too much for the hardware that we had available at that time. It wasn't just tuk-tuks and smashing your old phones and taking pictures in OnePlus branded clothing that helped hype up devices. In 2015, Carl Pei, with the help of Oppo, launched the OnePlus 2. And in Carl Pei's own words, it was the first phone to be launched in VR. And at that point, 
Carl Pei's dominance at OnePlus was ultimately what was getting the attention of people around the world. This idea of a tech enthusiast first brand was really, really popular. Now it's really important that we think back to 2013, 2014, 2015 era. At this point in time, OnePlus was really the only brand coming out of China with China specific devices for the Western market. This was before Oppo had made their push into Western markets. This was before Xiaomi was launching outside of China. And really, OnePlus was the only pipeline that Chinese manufacturers had to the Western world. The more I dig into this, the more I realize that OnePlus devices were just rebranded Oppo devices running some version of semi-stock Android. And that's no secret, we've known that for a while. But how was Carl Pei able to give us a Oppo Trojan horse to sneak its way into Western markets? One word, arbitrage, cultural arbitrage. See, Carl Pei growing up in China means that he can understand the Chinese language and he understands Chinese cultures to some way. But because he lived in America and went to school in Europe, he has a sense of the Western audience as well. And that's really, really important when most Chinese companies at the beginning were trying to copy iOS. That's why OnePlus, which was such a stark difference to all of the other Chinese brands. They understood that the Western audience liked the idea of a Nexus device, liked the idea of a Pixel device, and that giving enthusiasts stock Android ultimately was how a Chinese brand could invade Western markets. Not the hardware, but ultimately the software and the flavor of Android that they were giving us. And this cultural arbitrage, this understanding of what the Westerners want, getting it from a cheaper source from the Eastern countries, being China, where most phones are manufactured, and then selling it at a higher margin in a Western country is ultimately what allowed Carl Pei and Pete Lau to bring Oppo to Western markets as one plus. If it wasn't for Carl Pei's understanding of this, then Color OS 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 would have never really caught on in Western markets the same way OnePlus has. And it for sure would not have caught on in places like India, where the Indian OnePlus buyer is possibly the most tech savvy buyer in the world. And this is something that Carl Pei said. And there was actually something that was really interesting that I read in a Carl Pei interview, which was that many of the employees of OnePlus in China could speak English and that Carl Pei's ability to understand Western culture was more than just a simple ability to understand language. He commented on many of the Chinese employees' ability to understand cultural aspects of Western markets to be lacking. And that because of his international background, he was able to translate cultural or buyer trends in Western markets, interpret those for the Chinese manufacturer, and ultimately, give us a device that we have today. Now, Carl Pei's not over, and Carl Pei's hype marketing machine is not over. In fact, Carl Pei launched the Nothing brand, and he launched these overpriced, overhyped pair of truly wireless headphones. These truly wireless headphones don't feature anything more spectacular than the $100 pair of Pamu Quiet or the $100 pair of Pamu Quiet Mini, and they certainly aren't gonna have a better microphone than the Elevat Clear, and link to all of these reviews for you guys up here. But the idea of a fully translucent pair of headphones from a brand named Nothing 
is viral. And that's what Carl Pay knows, which is why Carl Pay and Carl Pay's company bought the rights to use the Essential Phone, which is another brand that resonates with enthusiasts. A brand that is essential, giving people this stock Android experience. And now that recently Carl Pay has announced that there's gonna be a $50 million collaboration or more funding to go with Qualcomm, it's inevitable that the Carl Pay hype machine is going to throw its weight behind another phone. And it's just left up to be seen whether or not we're going to get stock Google, lineage OS, or some other stock-ish Android ROM. I wanna bring this back really quick to talking for a second about Steve Jobs, because Steve Jobs, as Carl Pace said, is one of his biggest inspirations. And there is one key delineating factor that we all know about Steve Jobs. And that's the fact that Steve Jobs experimented with psychedelic drugs, LSD, possibly MDMA, possibly mushrooms, and other psychedelics. And ultimately, at least in my mind, as someone who may or may not have dabbled in them, a lot of the innovation, a lot of the things that we see from Apple are things that are so far out there, they could only come from the imagination. They could only come from something out of this world or out of this realm. And at least that's how Steve Jobs wanted it to. And unfortunately, I don't really see that with Carl Pei. Because Carl Pei's genius is not in the devices he creates, it's in the hype for the devices that he chooses to hype up. My name is Mitchell. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.